So this is an exercise that I use kind of as a test for my students to see um, whether they are turning out from the right place, whether they are lengthening their legs correctly, whether they are executing releve correctly. Um, there, it's impossible to cheat your turnout. Um, and so I use this pretty much in every class except for my seven-year-olds. They just physically can't do it. Um, it'll also show you exactly how strong you are. Um, there is no way to do this exercise and cheat at it. <laughs> That's why I like it. So I call it plies on the ceiling. You're going to lay on your back and put the hands straight out to the ground. The back should be completely on the ground. You're going to put the legs in the air, flat like you're standing on the ceiling, and turn the knobs open to first position, and stretch the legs all the way straight. Now already right here, some of your students may not be able to get their legs all the way straight. Um, they may think that their legs are straight, but there won't be until you really press the heels into the mirror and into the ceiling. So the exercise is just very simple. It's demi plie and stretch straight and releve up on the point and flex the feet. And you do that four times in first and second. Now, when you demi plie, the goal here is to turn out as much as possible and spiral without letting the ankles flip like this. And so as the teacher, you're able to walk up and make a correction on their feet and press their knees open so that they can feel just how much turnout they have. You're also able to see if they're digging with the, the toes like this or if they're actually lengthening through the backs of the legs. Then the student is going to press the legs up all the way straight and lengthen through the backs of the heels. So if you tell this, them to flex, they're just going to pull the toes back. If you tell them to lengthen through the heels, they're gonna reach the back of the leg. Then we articulate onto point and work all the way up. And it's very common for the knees to soften and for the turnout to go here. So you wanna really make sure that when they're in this position and they're all the way straight and rotated, that they keep the rotation and they keep the length in the knees and they really spiral in this position, and then they flex back into first position. I have many advanced students who are only able to do probably four of these in first and four in second, and maybe a couple in fifth before they start shaking. So this is a very difficult exercise. So this is a good alternative for students that are not quite strong enough to be able to do it properly laying on their back and you're going to do it sitting. And I like to have them do it sideways so that they can see their back. And I have them turn their head in the mirror and they can see the flatness of their back and pretend their head is a balloon and their back is a string. So they're pulling themselves along. The hands are gonna be on the hips and they're gonna flex the feet and lengthen the heels towards the mirror or towards the wall. Demi plie and turn the knobs and then press all the way straight and really spiral and lengthen and then point all the way, keeping the rotation, same corrections apply here, and then pull the toes back to flex. So that one's a good alternative for students who are not quite able to do it on their back. So another thing that I look at is control of the core and the upper body. And so one thing that I make my students do before I put them on point is to hold first position with proper alignment and be able to releve in first without any wobbles whatsoever. This will tell me whether their ankle strength is up to par, whether their core strength is up to par, and whether they're engaging their abs and their shoulders properly. Another thing that I'll do to have them strengthen is to extend the arms and press down like they're pressing against a table. Sometimes I'll put my hands under their arms so that I have something tangible to press on, and then have them go to second and press down to releve. When you're on point, using these muscles and lengthening up and pressing down to go up is so crucial that I make it a point to make sure that they feel that before they get their point shoes. And so they should be able to press down and releve and hold their balance without any wobbles for a solid 16 counts without any issues. Um, I also like for them to be able to balance on one foot uh, just because there's a lot of one foot work in point. I also look at their legs from behind and I check out their ankle buttons, which are these things right here and make sure that they are not pronating and rolling in like this or supinating and coming out. I always tell them that the ankle buttons should be across the street from each other. And then I watch them do a slow eleve up and then pressing all the way down and not have any wobbling or hopping or popping of the ankles down. 
And so they should be able to fully control the elevator all the way up and all the way down without any ankle problems. They should also be able to do it in first position with correct alignment without, again, popping or wobbling or without clawing at the floor with their toes. I do also ask that my students are able to do four elevés on one foot and four elevés on the other in coup de pied and make sure that when they go up, their standing leg doesn't lose their rotation or their working leg for that matter. They should also be able to do it mostly without the bar, maybe just a fingertip on the bar. When it comes to point, there is no reason to rush. There is no reason to put a student on point before they're able to handle it. There is no reason to put a student on point when they cannot dance flat properly. Um, if they cannot do a decent pirouette, if they uh, cannot maintain their turnout, if they cannot handle a reasonable length adagio, um, if they can't land in fifth after a petite allegro combination, they have no business being on point. Um, point is a, a step up from being able to do other things properly. And so I make it um, very clear to my students that it's not about being able to pass these tests or hit this position or be this strong or have your ankles be this stretchy. Um, you you want to be able to do something when you get up there into your point shoes. I don't want you to just do releves for the first year of your point training. I'd like you to actually be able to do something. And um, my students are. Um, they, they spend a couple weeks strengthening and conditioning and learning the technique and then we start doing center work and we do H pace and we do pirouettes and PK turns and they're able to handle it um, because I make very sure that they are actually ready to do something when they get up there into their shoes. Um, so do please do not rush your point students. It is not worth it. Um, if you take a dancer who is inexperienced and weak and you put them on point and they work for a few months, uh, they're, they're not going to be able to do much. If you take an older dancer who's waited a lot longer but is stronger and you put them on point and train them for a few months, they're going to be able to do significantly more. Um, and, and so it's really not worth the time and the money and the, the pain to put them on point before they're ready. Um, it's also not worth the injury. You end up with um, bone issues, stress fractures, um, feet growing in weird directions that they shouldn't be growing. It's just a mess. Or in my case, arthritis. Um, I'm 25, I have arthritis, it's a problem. <laughs> uh, so you, you do wanna make sure that you, that you wait to point your students on point. There is absolutely no reason to risk their bodies and their livelihood. Uh, just because you think that they they are pressuring you into into being in point shoes, so never never um, never compromise on that. It's not worth it. Um, always stick to your guns, so that you can look back and say, yeah, yeah, I, I did the right thing, and and not look back and, and say, I probably didn't have a wrong point. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. No, it's really not. To say. I have a lot more to say about point. Um, it's pretty much my specialty. It's what I love. Um, my focus in dance class is pre-point and point one, and so that's kind of where my heart is, and that's a lot of what I write about on Beyond the Bar. So check it out, and I will see you next time.